So what is a baseband equivalent signal in communications? Well, here we've got a picture of a passband signal in the frequency domain. It only exists in this frequency range around what we call the carrier frequency. If we were to sample this and to try to do perfect reconstruction, then Nyquist tells us we would need to sample at twice the highest frequency component. So this is F max, and we would need to sample at twice that F max. And that is a very high frequency for radio communications. And until very recently, we just haven't been able to have analog to digital converters at this rate. Uh, in any case, it's overkill. Why is it overkill? Well, because we don't need to reconstruct the entire signal in this frequency range because we know that it's a passband signal. We've been told that, uh, and that's how we send communication signals. And so we know that it's zero all the way in here. So we don't need to sample at this high rate to reconstruct all of that. All we need to do is to be able to reconstruct this shape. So let's see how we do that. And that is the essence of the equivalent baseband signal. So let's just first of all look at this and re realize that and remember uh, property of Fourier transforms is that if it is a real signal, then the Fourier transform is symmetric. And so we're going to be considering real signals here. So this is a symmetric function here. Um, so I've deliberately drawn the uh, as an example of the shape here where this is a straight line here uh, and therefore it's symmetric, it's straight line here. So because this is symmetric, it is a real signal. They're the ones we're interested in, of course, because they're really sending signals in the passband. Um, okay, so what we can see straight away is that uh, because it's symmetric, in terms of actually capturing all the information, we don't need to keep both copies because there's redundancy in the information in the frequency domain. So something we can do if we have a signal and we would like to get its baseband equivalent or low pass equivalent, uh, then what we can do is we take our signal. This is the frequency domain version here. So we take our signal XT and then we take a Fourier transform. So we do a Fourier transform, Fourier transform. And then we take the positive part, okay? Then we take the positive part. Uh, and then we shift to a, be around zero. So what do we do here? So this is this part here is the positive part of, of the signal. So we're going to call that X positive. And then we're going to shift it. So we're going to take F plus FC. So this is what we're plotting here, X positive of F plus FC, and that function looks like this. So it's just the positive part here. We've zeroed the negative part. We just take the positive part and then we shift it, and that's what X plus is without this, and then we shift it to be centered on zero. And what you can see is here, all the shape here is maintained. We've got still got all the information that we have in this signal here. The same information exists in this signal here. And now we can see that if we were to sample this one, then we would just need to sample at twice that rate there, uh, twice this, this uh, frequency here. So the sampling rate would be much lower if you can take your passband signal and move it down to the baseband. Okay, so we can, we can actually do that. Uh, now, of course, let's see, because we have... Um, uh, taken uh, only one of the two, if we want to write down our low pass equivalent signal, so we have to do this shifting here first, we can get our low pass equivalent signal by taking this signal here, and I'll just draw up here, I'll draw multiply by two, uh, so that's multiplying by two, and then we take the uh, inverse Fourier transform, inverse Fourier transform, and this gives us this signal here. Okay, so this is the signal here in the time domain. It's the low pass equivalent or the baseband equivalent. We call it XL for low pass, a function of time. It's a time domain signal. Uh, it's the low pass equivalent and it's got a real part or we call an in phase part. So we use XI and a quadrature part. So that's XQ, uh, XQ there. And this J is the complex number. Okay, so 
This is what we can do to take a passband signal and to produce a low pass equivalent or a baseband equivalent. As I said just before, I'll just repeat it here. We take the Fourier transform, take the positive part, shift it so it's centered on zero. Then we multiply by two and take the inverse Fourier transform and we find the low pass equivalent. So let's just point out some things about the low pass equivalent. If the low pass equivalent is symmetric itself, then we only have the real part in the low pass equivalent. It will only have a real part. So it would be called real baseband. But if this is not symmetric, like the one I've drawn here, then we would have a complex baseband. That's what we call complex baseband. Okay, so let's look at uh, what, how we can construct our signal in terms, or write our signal in terms of this low pass equivalent. So it turns out, I don't do all the maths here, but it turns out that the, the actual signal, this signal here, in the time domain can be written in terms of this low pass equivalent. So the x, xt equals xit, so it's the real component of your low pass equivalent, times cos of 2 pi fc times t, and minus the quadrature component, so that's xqt, times sine of 2 pi fc t. So this is a relationship that relates the real, the signal in the passband with the baseband equivalent, the low pass equivalent. And so that's what we have when we have these two values here. So let's look at a practical example of this in the case, for example, of QAM, for example. Well, let's just look at when, well, actually, first of all, let's just look at when we have just a real component in the baseband. So I'm just going to draw some of those, uh, some examples of that here. So let's say we have a real component in the baseband. So let's say it's, it's real. And that, what that means is this function here is not like it's shown here but we're just going to consider a case where it is symmetric. So I'm just going to draw that here and we're going to do the reverse process. So we're going to start with a baseband and we're going to see how we can produce the passband signal. Okay, so if we take a baseband signal that is real, so it's only xit, this xq equals zero in this case, because this is symmetric, that's why we know that. And then we can, uh, let's see here, we're going to do this According to this equation here, we're going to take that in phase component, this part zero, and we're going to multiply by cos of 2 pi fct. Well, when we multiply in the time domain, we're going to convolve in the frequency domain. So we are going to take our Fourier transform of our in phase component, and we're going to, oh, this is the baseband low pass equivalent, and we're going to multiply by cos. What does cos look like in the frequency domain? It looks like two delta functions. And what do we know when we convolve two functions together? Well, we shift the function, if one of, if there's delta functions, then it shifts the function to the location of the delta functions. So then we're going to have this uh, function here. So this is a graphical way of understanding this equation here. I've just drawn it for the case where it is a real low pass equivalent. So xq equals zero. And then we take xi, which is uh, this Fourier transform here, xi of, of f, and we can multiply in the time domain, which means we convolve in the frequency domain. We multiply by cos, so we have to convolve with the Fourier transform of cos. And that will give us this at these two locations. You can see we have generated a passband signal. So this is the case when it was a real baseband, real baseband a signal. Okay, and so I think hopefully you can see there's going to be a similar thing happens if you have a complex baseband because you'll just simply have xqt uh, and it will be uh, multiplied by the sine. So the sine function also looks like this and when you're multiplying you get the same thing. It's the, and then the addition of the two will give you the overall signal. Okay, so let's think about if we have done this, let's say we did that for QAM and we had a, an in-phase component and a quadrature component, and this is how we generate a QAM signal, exactly this way, then what happens at the receiver? Well, we can do demodulation. So in the receiver, we're going to do demodulation. Now, the first thing we do is we do it as, and I'm gonna show here that you can do it as two components in phase and quadrature separately. And therefore, we'll see that we can actually recover the in-phase component and the quadrature component 
after doing demodulation so that we can just simply work with xi and xq and we don't actually need to mathematically write down the modulation and demodulation and that's when we have a baseband equivalent signal in the communications. So let's remind ourselves here we've got a QAM signal in the time domain it's made up of an in phase component and the quadrature component we get these numbers these are complex numbers from the constellation diagram and for more information on these there's videos in the link below this video in the description below the video uh, and so this is our passband signal made up of uh, from our baseband signal of in phase and quadrature and so at the receiver what we can do is we can take our signal, which we've received, and multiply by cos of 2 pi FCT. And let's see what happens when we do that. That's what we're going to do first. Okay, so that when, when XT gets multiplied by cos, we take this equation here and we multiply by cos. So we've got XIT times cos squared. That's what we've got here, XIT times cos squared, minus XQT times sine times cos. And that's what is shown here. And in communications, we're sending a constant constellation or two constant, con uh, uh, two constant constellation values in the in phase and quadrature from a constellation points, and we're sending them as constants over a signaling period capital T. When we integrate this to add up all the energy over that period capital T, we integrate this expression here over capital T, then we can see this big, these are constant over those time periods. So this comes out of the integral and we've got the integral of cos squared. Well, the integral of cos squared gives us a constant non-zero value. And I've just written A here for this. So we've got A times XIT. This is a constant over that period. And this other term here, this is constant over the symbol period, so that also comes out of the integral. And then you've got the integral of sine times cos, and the integral of sine times cos is zero. So what we can see is in our demodulator, if we multiply by cos, where well, we mix it with a, a waveform that's cos at the, at the carrier frequency, then we will recover the in-phase component of our input signal. And then I won't do all the maths, but if you take your signal and multiply by the sine wave, then you will recover the quadrature component. And so what we can see, hopefully you can see by this and seeing these equations and the integral and the fact that sine times cos over that period equals zero when you integrate, uh, that means that you can extract the in-phase component separately from the quadrature component. And therefore, when we write things down mathematically, we can work simply in the baseband because all we've done here by putting it up into the passband by multiplying by the causes and signs, and then demodulating it by again multiplying by a cos and a sine brings it back down to the baseband. So actually, we can represent our entire communication system just in the baseband, where we have just xi and xq are the constellation points, and we can have them at the transmitter and receiver as a purely baseband representation. Because as you can see, we go up to the passband and down to the back to the baseband, uh, at the transmitter and the receiver respectively, those operations cancel each other out and we are simply able to operate just at the baseband. So if you found this uh, video helpful, uh, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the web page in the description below this video where there's a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.